Good afternoon. I am Tony Dottino. I am the founder of the USA Memory Championship and the uh, president of Dottino Consulting. And uh, just a quick update on the uh, call we had yesterday with the team on the Memory Championship. Uh, the virtual event we're doing November 14th uh, from 1 until 5. Uh, we're making progress. We've got people signing up to compete. Uh, they actually cover five different states. Uh, we've got a mix of uh, male and females and ages, and uh, it's exciting. So we're looking forward to it, uh, and we're just on the first week of just getting an announcement out on it. So that's, a, uh, that's all good news. But I was at a, um, uh, a virtual session yesterday where they were talking about the importance of exercise and what different institutions are coming back and their research of the human brain and really emphasizing the crucial importance of having exercise. And I've done several broadcasts on it over the last uh, several months, but I wanted to try to bring it all together because one of the things I found that was missing in the uh, uh, virtual uh, class I was in yesterday was why is it important for people to exercise and what does that have to do with your brain? We think of exercise as uh, building muscles or taking care of our abs or maybe our legs. Uh, and building strength. So we look at people in gyms or in spas and we think of what they're doing in terms of exercise and looking at them and building uh, muscle. But do we think of the links of those muscles and the strength of, of those physical uh, observations we can make? And are we also thinking about what it does to strengthen uh, our thinking, our cognitive fitness, and our mental health. And we worry about our mental health sometimes, I think, when it's too, we're, we're too old, we're older than we should be uh, thinking about it. So when I say older than we should be thinking about it, we should be thinking about our mental health from the time we're in school and we're learning to learn, from the time we then get to our, our work and what are we doing to mentally exercise ourselves in our jobs as we're learning new, new procedures and new policies and meeting new people? We're doing a lot of the things that are important for us. But as we get older, what are we doing to continue to maintain our health of our brain as it relates to exercising? And today's uh, talk is more about exercising in the physical body so I want to talk about why is it important to exercise the physical body and how does that help with brain health? And then we'll do another broadcast on exercising your brain, but the, they think of the word exercise as not just physical, but also mental. But let's go back and just do a quick study of science. Our brain is using a combination of oxygen and chemistry or chemicals to generate the electricity that generates our thinking and encodes our memories and allows us to recall information and also to create from it. So if we step back and think of our brain needing oxygen and chemistry, the question I always ask people is where do we get the oxygen that we bring into our bodies? And its primary source is through our breathing. Now, as we are breathing, what kind of oxygen are you taking in? And therefore, the connection of if our brain is using, uh, and science can, has varied on this, but let's be conservative, 20% of the oxygen that we take in is utilized by our brain to generate the firings of our, uh, our, our cells that then are the way we think and the way we act and behave, then what kind of oxygen are you putting into your brain is the question. And the, what kind do you need to have if you want to maintain long-term brain health? So as I'm thinking about this workshop that I was a part of yesterday on virtual, I'm thinking, gee, they were talking to the people in it about things they can do to exercise and that was on the physical level. And the question that hit to me was, gee, would it be helpful to explain to people why is it important 
for them to have some level of physical exercise in their day-to-day -day habits. So my talk today. So why is it important in that? Because your brain uses oxygen to generate its thinking patterns and its encoding and its creativity. So the question becomes, what are you doing to maintain some level of aerobic exercising? as well as anaerobic muscle. Because more and more of today's science is coming out and suggesting not only do we need to exercise our lungs and our breathing and maintain a strong level of, of oxygen in our brains, but that our brain is also communicating with our muscle groups and therefore you also need to have some level of muscle that maintains its life no matter how old you are. And what becomes more important from today's science is the discovery of as we get older, right, our body's immune systems and our, our ability to maintain muscle are getting weaker by the, the age of, of how old we are. And therefore, it, it's imperative to do some level of muscle work that builds maintains your muscle strength. And so people say, well, I can't get to the gym, but you can lift up you know, a gallon of, of milk or water. You can pick up a couple of uh, half gallon things and pick them up and just do some curls and, and do some lifts and, and things with them. And so when I was listening to people talking in this uh, virtual session yesterday, it occurred to me that there are so many different things that we can be doing, even during a COVID-19, to maintain good muscle strength in our legs, in our calves, in our arms, in our stomach, without having to go crazy and without having to go to a gym. So one of the things that to me is simple is if you want to maintain, I always loved and, and in my houses, I lived up in New York, uh, we had steps, and I, anything that had to go to the next level, I was always willing to volunteer to take groceries or uh, clothes or whatever we had downstairs on the front floor. I'm, I was the first to volunteer. I'll take it upstairs. So if you have stairs in your house, volunteer to take anything from the first floor up to the second floor. And do that three or four times a day, and that's not only good for your your legs, but it's also good for your aerobic activity. And that's a simple thing you can do if you happen to live in a house that has a second floor. Suppose you live in an apartment or you live in a condo. How about walking up the steps uh, and make it a goal to walk up and down for whatever the reasons are, at least track, hey, can I at least get up and down the steps five times today? For whatever the reasons are. Maybe you need to go to the car and get something. Maybe you need to go out and pick something up for dinner at a takeout. But just make it a point of thinking, okay, let me go up and down some steps five times today and make that a goal. Building your, your thighs and your calves and keeping those maintained. And look at up and down the steps. Don't take the elevator. It always blows my mind when I was going to the spa, to the, to the gym, watching people on the first floor hit the button to take an elevator to the second floor. And these were personally fit and fine people. Hey, how about walking up the steps? It's not going to hurt you. It's going to help you. If you're, if you're in a house and you don't have an apartment and you don't go out up and down, you're in a level, level house, uh, take, take some object, uh, go get a brick or go get something that'll give you a, a couple of inches and just step up and down 10 times. Just get something that's you know, raised a bit and just go up and down, up and down. 10 different times and maintain some of that muscle strength in your legs. If you've got an opportunity of lifting something up, just lift something that's got three to four pounds. It doesn't have to be heavy. Just lift something up and if you're sitting watching TV or maybe after uh, getting up uh, to get something from a chair, just lift something with five pounds in it and just lift it up five or six times. You don't have to be a muscle, you know, uh, muscle bound, but you can do some basic lifting that maintains good shoulder and arm muscles. Uh, we're getting a little bit colder now, but I'd say get in the pool and do some swimming. Do just, I, I, I'm not a great swimmer, so I just do 
I stand on my feet, walk up and down, back and forth on laps in the pool, just working my arms and moving the water. Move, get into some water exercises. So there's a lot of things we can do, even during these, these times we have, to build muscle and to build aerobic, both leading to really important things that give us long-term brain health and keep our brain firing away at no matter what our age is. This is my Saturday, uh, 3 p.m. Uh, live with Tony. Uh, next week, uh, we'll have some more updates on the memory uh, championship as people have begun to sign up and we're getting information out to more, more people about our virtual uh, competition on November 14th. And it should be fun. I want it to be fun and exciting for people and just enjoy it. It's not about being a mental athlete and a mental memory champion. It's about getting to do something that may give you some sparks and generate some interest and enthusiasm for you as we go into 2021. So have a good weekend. I know this is a, we're getting more college football games back on TV. We got the NFL that's back on TV. We have golf that's being played in different parts of the, the world uh, that's on TV. So we're, we're at least getting some new things that we can be watching on TV. So enjoy your weekend and may your favorite team win a game this week. And we'll see you on Monday in the 7 o'clock hour.